had to crossify. <laughs> you know, Santa Claus got a nice big bag with toys in it, big smile, everybody feeling good, no challenge, no unsettling, no unnerving anybody. Everybody just in on the celebration. He said, no, no, we don't keep it from you. We're going to tell the truth. I was blessed to be in upstate New York a couple of years ago. An old black preacher came up to me about 82 years old. He said, Brother Matt, I want to tell you the truth now. You see this big old room you, you're in? That 800 people here tonight. He said, that I was here when Brother Martin came up here after he came out against the war. After he came up with his poor people campaign, bringing poor people across the board after he gave, had his critique of plutocratic capitalism with the 1% only at that time, 28% of the wealth now was 43% of the wealth. And only 200 people showed up. I said, you got to be kidding. He said, yeah. And he said, and some of the black leaders and black preachers mobilized against him and told him not to show up because he was a communist. Believe in the vicious lies of the New York Times the vicious lies of Washington Post that said that Martin Luther King Jr.'s voice was an extension of Radio Hanoi. How mendacious can you be? How mendacious can you get? And Martin said what? To step up to every speech after April 4th, 1967 in Riverside Church when he talked about the silence being a betrayal in regard to the vicious crimes of the American Empire. Say, you never knew me. You never knew my calling. You never knew my commitment. I'm the same brother. I'm the same Jesus loving free black man. Y'all trying to convince yourselves I was just a civil rights leader? No. Was a particular issue that had to do with how you respond to a vicious legacy of white supremacy at that moment. But I'm also concerned about working people. I'm also concerned about poor people. I can hear him saying I'm concerned about the vicious legacy of male supremacy. He did speak honestly about the anti-Jewish hatred that was running around. He would still want to talk about anti-Jewish hatred. But he would also talk about vicious Israeli occupation. Oh, yes. He wanted to be more consistent. And he knew that an Israeli baby is precious, but just as precious as a Palestinian baby. They go hand in hand. He's got to be consistent. That the day also called constancy. Concerned about a white baby in Newtown, Connecticut, but he was also about brown babies in East Los Angeles and yellow babies in San Francisco or red babies in Canada, the Aboriginal, or what we call here precious indigenous brothers and sisters. That's the kind of brother he was, but he wasn't alone. He's not an isolated individual to be put on some pedestal.